Welcome to the EGC 20k Age of Empires 4 tournament. This is the finals and we've reached the fifth installment between the last generals. Three, two, one. Howdy, partner. Is there an opposite greeting to long time no see? Anyway, enough about me, Nuki. How about you? How about Blue instructing the Rus on the west side? Brap in it. His legend is Viper. Oh, I feel a hundred years younger. Over on the east side, studying the art of screaming orders at Mongols. Get to work, you lowlives. We have an expiring kingdom to build. Do you want your families to remember your name? Because mine does. It's the mister. And they couldn't be happier, squeezing between wood and spooned by gold. I always like to imagine when I'm losing a game of Age of Empires, I'm not really losing. I'm just the little spoon. So here we are. Mongolian Heights and the docks is already being built by the likes of the Mister. Light bullying from the Khan carrying what must be an early 8th century nerf gun. I think Mister has collected most of their sheep here, so nothing for Viper to take. Anyway, uh, this is match five in the Mongolian Heights zone. It's a great looking map featuring three major choke points over a river. The Mister is playing for a time crystal though because Viper only requires one more victory to take home the giant bag of money. Whoever gets the money can melt it down into a statue of themselves to commemorate a magnificent achievement. Because money is no object, but a statue is. Viper getting multiple scouts for the deer harvesting. <laughs> Look at this sheep here, ruminating poetically. Why, oh why must we sheep die in a battle we do not partake in? I'd sooner watch a scout find wolves and a dodge challenger to escape in. I'm sure Viper will end up picking them up when they go to harvest their awful tasting meat. Viper's also moving a villager to build a dock, but the Khan is acting as goalkeeper. Whilst that goes on, it's time for a recap of this matchup so far. We've got a lot to cover with this kind of history. In match one, Mr. Zabissid toppled Viper's English in a fantastic battle. Match two, Viper's Mongols Taurush quarantined Mr.'s French in a fantastic battle. Match three, Viper's English defend against Mr.'s Mongols in a fantastic battle. Match four, Mr. claimed the sea as France against Viper's France and lost in a fantastic battle. I think I mentioned this in match two. France is a dangerous pick. My memories of French victories, they only ever seem to occur when fighting against France. Where France is guaranteed a win. It's just nowhere near as strong, at least on land, as everyone has been making out. And yet time and time again, we have seen the overproduction of royal knights being foisted by cheap and cheerful spear folk or the perceptive and precise crossbows. The Khan does manage to witness where Viper is building their docks. Sends a lone spearman to harass the villager. No, Anushka! Oh, they were one of the hardest working laborers Viper had. And their work won't end there. They'll get loaded onto a fishing boat and used to chum the waters. Recycling is important though i do feel like an idiot when i'm licking all the jam out of a jar or grease off a cardboard so it can be recycled whilst nestle 
are burning lead to make their milkshake powder and pushing the waste down fun slides into rivers. The good news is the docks are going on for Viper. Mister sending some more guards out to impose sanctions. The sanction of minor fire. A weak, scorching ray can trap that won't bother Viper. It's a small hindrance, sure. One that is manageable. The villager <laughs> repairing, keeping their head low. Shh. Stealth repairing. Extinguishing the flame with a quiet tap of the hammer. A Lodia ship arrives. It's one of the Roos special units, like a wooden transformer. A fishing ship can be an attack ship in disguise. Almost every ship can be changed into another ship at a small cost, and it takes 20 seconds to perform the necessary modifications. Let's glance over to Mr. Docks. Much nicer resort. Three fishers enjoying the peace, and they'll even get an observation tower too. Okay, I think things might be heating up a lot soon. I mean, we already have some dark spears out stacking up against the dock. Viper might lose this. Oh well, we'll keep an eye out. Uh, but I've got a contract to complete. The EGC stands for the Elite Gaming Channel. They are the hosts of this tournament. And if you like watching Age of Empires 4 and desire more, then check the link in the description to travel over to their domain. Where are these spears traveling to? Up the river. Anyway, it's highly recommended that you do check the video description. You'll also find uh, you are watching this on Ironcast. And we'll be covering plenty of great competitive matches, but also community orientated events as well. So if you want to get involved in some fun ideas, you should definitely come along to discord.me slash Ironcast. And just in case you sneezed, yawned, or performed any other involuntary action and didn't hear, that link again is discord.me slash Iron cast. We want to get together for some big team civilization total war games and really push the boundaries of Age of Empires 4 and RTS. A hunting competition pay-per-view live event this Sunday night, Scout vs. Khan, and a tables, ladders, and deers match. <laughs> the bounty has now accrued past the point of tier 2. Which means Viper gets 10% increased food harvesting rate. And they've got plenty of sheep to add to that. Seems like they are on track to reaching the maximum bounty if they can get the boars and wolves. Viper bringing Lodia attack ships on to the Mister's fish farms. It's disruptive, but Mister just relocates their fishing boats closer to the tower. These attack ships don't do much structural damage, unlike spears who can whip out fire, so this effort won't have an immediate payoff. The outpost probably offers good protection when you've got people sitting inside, and any fishing boats that would be attacked could just pop inside the docks and have some tea. Now, I'm surprised to see that the Kremlin was Viper's choice of landmark. Perhaps it was a quick, panicky response to seeing spears early on. You might think to yourself, why not put that on one of the choke points? And the answer to that would be, well, there was spearmen running up and down the river, and Mr. had excellent vision coverage between the spears and the Khan and the outpost. There's no way Viper could have slipped the Kremlin on a choke point without repercussions. The Golden Gate may have been better overall, but it's not that amazing of a landmark. It's not a game changer, so I wouldn't overly worry or criticize that decision. The sheep continue to follow their leader. It's Viper's policy to eat that deer before the sheep. Already some villagers collecting to a hunting cabin. I wonder if the deer will be moved closer for optimization, but there's no time to dwell on that. Mister's fighting back with a light junk ship. They might be outnumbered, but the repairs are on their side. They can whittle Viper's ships down gradually and reclaim the northern side of the river. And by the way, I'm not too sure if people know this one, but if you put a scout inside a transport ship, the transport ship gains the scout's vision range. Not particularly useful here, but in the last match, uh, and every time Baldur's Bay comes up, I keep forgetting to impart that vital bit of information because that's really useful for peeking into the foggy areas on the sea. But anyway, 
Another chunk of sheep to be deposited for Viper. They are gearing up for the Castle Age. The Mister is already ascending to the Castle Age. Those fishing boats hurled them into an economic lead. The Mongols just don't like being in the Feudal Age, just in general. Looks as if the Mister will also be fighting with cavalry. Maybe they'll try and score some villager kills. Double stables, a barracks, and a blacksmith surrounding the Uvu. We saw some of Viper's archers nearby. They'll have to be careful not to be spotted because of the cavalry oot and a boot. Ah, Viper missed some deers. It'd be good to grab them whilst the archers are here. Viper Scout near the Uvu. Helping keeping tabs on the Mister's movement, and I think Mister might have spotted them. They are mysteriously heading over in that direction, the terrain being an awkward one. Viper will grab the deer. They corner themselves against the cliff's edge. There's no escape, but they will never surrender. <laughs> yeah! Now this is what it was like when you killed those deer. Mm, not so fun now, when you don't stand a chance, is it? Oh look, there was a back passage secretly here. That's very well hidden. Five archers for a bounty boost. Viper is close to getting that third bonus. A part of that bonus is increasing the tick rate of gold from their hunting cabins, which works well with their second landmark choice, the High Trade House, which also generates gold based on the amount of trees it is near. It's also a factory that produces something that looks, sounds, and even tastes like deer. With both of our contenders in the Castle Age, maybe one of them will deliver the war that we came here to see. Instead, we get something like fox hunting with the Mongols chasing a poor, terrified scout. Come on, little fella. You can make it. No. Another ghost arrival in the land of the dead. At least you can't be taxed there. What? Inheritance tax? You've got to be sh me. Well, there's uncertainty for Viper now. Mister's got cavalry spears and spring elves. A pick a mix of military. Viper needs to muscle up an army to repel this, or like many in this economy, be made redundant. Viper might also want to marshal their few crossbows that they have inside their own settlement rather than instructing them out into no man's land. Safety in numbers. Unless you're traveling across a minefield. Thankfully, there are no mines in Age of Empires 4, not that we know of at least. I think the Kremlin might now come in handy. This defensive building can house villagers in. Those lucky gold miners will get to have a second job. Mine the gold, defend the village. Do a good job and we won't kill you. Do a bad job and the enemy will kill you. That should be plenty of incentive for the serfs. Spriggels rolling up. They'll definitely put a damper on those villagers. Vipers going to instead shift those villagers to a different gold vein, one would assume. They continue crossbow production, but it is rather slow and it doesn't answer back to those spring elves. How is Viper going to deal with them? The Khan is scouting. They find the high trade house. They signal the army to maneuver around here. Vipo's crossbows to defend more than they can chew, though. Mr. Building more spring elves, really laying into that weakness Viper is showing right now for a lack of anti siege. Let the torching of the high trade house commence. Yeah, Mr.'s going for it. And it shouldn't take too long with that many units. The stone miners will also be attacked. Viper using the high trade house cleverly. They are trading their high trade house for some extra time to buy more units. A siege workshop back there, no doubt concocting a spring eld. Yes, that is. I'm going to need some of those. Viper could try screaming to Bonnie Tyler in the sky. We're holding out for a hero! It's never worked before, but surely the chances of it working are just increasing each plea. 
Mister having a terrific barbecue. The Khan, ahead of the group, constantly checking. They want to know they have the lead at all times. What has Viper managed to accrue in these dark times? The Crossbow Regiment hasn't increased by much. Another Spring Eld to join the pack. And devastation as Mr. harasses the Lumberjacks and Jills who return up the hill so that they don't get brutally impaled. I feel Mr. Shaw is chipper about this. It's a very casual attack, just meandering around the edges, shooting whatever they can get. Not making a big spectacle about it. Whereas Viper, mm, yeah, not so chipper. Their villagers being thrown in the wood chipper by comparison. Population comparison. Mr. is up by 30 peeps. The blue villagers embracing the nomadic lifestyle. When the settlement is no longer safe, then it is time to migrate. And all that traveling is going to hinder the resource gathering rate of the Viper. And what about the new villagers being made? Do they stay or leave? And where will Mr. be next? And would Mr. be interested in getting a trebuchet? Because I'm itching to see one again. Not only would Mr. gain gold and food for burning buildings, that's just part of the Mongol bonus effect, it would really put some pressure on Viper to make a decision, force villagers to repair or ignore that and lose buildings. The Mr. has unlocked the military academy technology. Now units produce 25% faster across the board. The number just keeps going up and up for Mr. Viper, meanwhile, made a new lumber camp and the Mr. smells it, sees it, wants to feel it. Viper setting up their crossbows and spring elves as a deterrent. <laughs> Although, I don't think Mr. sees this as much as a deterrent as, as Viper might hope for. They'd love to trade a few blows. They've got units to lose after all. Come on, Trebuchet, knock out some towers. If you're new to this channel and have yet to subscribe, then subscribe now and receive your very own Trebuchet. Once you've subscribed, all you have to do is enter the code SUCK ON THESE LEMONS and you'll be ready to fling whatever you like at your neighbors across the road. Action afoot, Vipers crossbows going toe to toe with cavalry, the spring outs have their own battle of machines. It's like a medieval robot wars, but absolute garbage because we couldn't get Craig Charles to comment over it. I like to think the villagers inside the tower have little remote controls connected to the spring out, suddenly a change in optics. The crossbows sadly don't have enough bodies to tank the cavalry, though their efforts in returning the damage back to the cavalry should be commended. They did what they could. Bless their little X-shaped hearts. Ooh, I'm getting chills. It's like a ghost town here. This is where Viper keeps their gold miners. And this is where they keep their few woodcutters that they have left. Oh, Lord. Oh, dear. We're getting one of those horizontal melee trebuchets, sometimes referred to as a battering ram. Oh, hey, they built the high trade house again. Delightful, Mr. Sending a squad of cavalry to patrol the rear of the settlement. Will they continue on past? It does look like that if they do, it's highly likely they'll discover that gold vein occupied by Viper. That'll be bad news. And what Viper needs is some good news, like a god bestowing some miracle micro skills. Oh dear, the, the cavalry are going to find that gold vein. I don't suppose there's any chance of Red Alert threeing this up and using a time machine? Ah, the Mister really stretching this one out. They did this in a previous match where they took things very slowly. If Mister is victorious here, then we are on our way to match six, which means we could get a full best of seven. Exciting stuff. That would be totally radical, but all the more reason why Mr. doesn't want to make any mistakes. They want to cross the I's, dot the T's, take no shortcuts to victories. A new Khan is about to be born. Hooray! Fully developed and with horse. They'll return to the front lines. And I don't know if this was intended 
Uh, their ranged attack buff also applies to siege weapons. The Mister only has ranged in the form of those Spring Owls. And it's all the range they'll need. Battering Rams will topple this outpost with villagers inside. When the villagers inevitably go outside, unpleasantries await, just like in real life. Viper's wooden fortress equipped with a ballista and getting a hit on a red spring out. As Tesco would say, every little helps. Followed by a smack on the bottom because that's as the price. Although I love Sainsbury's slogan most of all. Mm, taste the difference. Mm, yeah, I did taste the difference. Could literally taste the value. Yeah. The mister, no trouble at all harvesting deer, which also tastes of value, but at prices which are extortionate. But that won't stop these peasants. They need to count those calories and break out of the three digits. Speaking of deer, their stones are on the move. Is the mister trying to win and spell their name with the corpses of Viper's people? When is what you have going to be enough? Vipers crossbows on the move, but I'm not sure of their intent. A blue scout breezing past the Uvu. Now, I don't think there's any information that Viper can extract from over here that could be put to immediate use. They can't harass villagers. They don't have cavalry. So the vision they need is probably on the army that is now entering their village. They're becoming very much a part of the furniture. This is just life now. It's Attack on Titan, but with the Red Army. Again, Mr. Pulls back. What is scaring you? What are you afraid of? I know I keep harping on about this, so rather than harp on about it, I think I might just literally harp on about it. You could win this game if you buy a trebuchet Kill them all with some rocks, crack their skulls Buy a trebuchet already! It's a beautiful piece of machinery, why would you not get one? I use my trebuchet every day at every opportunity I have beans and toast in the morning, it can open the can of beans and with a brief moment of readjustment it can butter my toast at extraordinary ranges. I don't have to be near my toast to butter it anymore. Here we go, Vipers, what, third regiment of crossbows? I've lost count, standing on guard near a town centre. Hiding the stealth forest might offer some minor protections from stray spring owls, but really... Uh, Viper has the right idea, trying to avoid combat entirely. Nothing will survive this Mongol stampede. You'll either get clipped by a spear or clopped by a hoof. And the choice isn't yours. The mister repeats the process again. Run in. Say some mean things about the villagers. Ride out giggling with the innocence of a child. Maybe the mister feels guilty sending soldiers to their deaths. He's trying to save lives. Maybe they've given each soldier a name and become too attached. The real answer is mister is sick. They want to see Viper suffer. They want to starve the Viper. Watch them coil in horror as their acreage depletes in Mother Earth's provisions. It's actually making me really hungry thinking about it. I need a burger. Mister's Cavalry Division approaching the Valley of the Two Trees. Its name a total mystery. Oh my divine Christ! The white flag is up! The Viper has been starved. The Rus have been defeated! Victory goes to the mister. What an action-packed game. But wait, the fun does not stop here. We're going to round six. Yes, I promise you things will heat up. Bless you for watching. My name's Anuki. 
I'll see you soon after a short nap.